So how do we include a graphics file inside of a tech document? Um, so there's kind of uh, two parts to the process. Um, some of this depends on which document class that you're working with, but I think for our semester, the document class that you're working with inside of the, uh, the, the style files that I provided for you will make this step, I think, unnecessary, but just in case. Um, when I use graphics in my documents, I load up a package. So include package. Uh, sorry, use package. And the package is called graphics X. Uh, this that uh, is it? No, sorry, it's graphic X. Uh, of course, it has to be named in, in a cryptic fashion. So graphic X uh, is the packet uh, package of graphics suites that I use for this. And then inside of your document. Um, the command to actually include a graphics element is just backslash include graphics. Um, and then inside of curly braces, you provide it with a file name. So I'm just going to say something like, I don't know, Pascal. Uh, and then depending on what kind of a file you have, you'll put the file extension here. Um, I don't know. I'm just going to put PDF for the moment. Um, but of course, if that's all that I do, then Overleaf is going to whine at me because it doesn't know what this file is or where it's coming from or anything, right? So this is going to pop up an error for me. Um, because in Overleaf, I also need to provide uh, a copy of this file um, inside of my Overleaf project so that it can retrieve it. So now I'm going to go out on the interwebs real quick and find something pascal.pdf. So how about Pascal's triangle PDF? So let's see. This is from a Google image search. I wonder if there are any PDF copies of it. Uh, view image. Yeah, so this is a JPEG. But you could also use a JPEG, I suppose. It's not the best file format in the world. So I'm just going to take this file. I'm going to quickly just save it. Um, well, you, can, you have a couple options, actually. You can either save the file onto your desktop and then re-upload it into Overleaf. But I think you can also upload to Overleaf just using a URL. So I'm going to try that. Uh, so I'm just going to copy that URL from the web. Uh, got to make this error go away somehow. Uh, and so I'm just going to choose to add files. Uh, and then you can use, if it's on your computer, then choose the upload from computer option. I'm just getting this from elsewhere on the web, so I'm going to choose to upload from URL. I'm going to paste the URL into my project. And then you can say what file name you want to give it inside of your Overleaf project. I'm just going to call it Pascal. I don't like this big long name. Um, so what that should do is it should just retrieve a copy of that image and put it into your Overleaf project. So you can see it right there, pascal.jpg. I'm just going to change the file format here inside of my command. And that should be enough just to get the graphic into my document, pascal.jpg. Let's see by the time it finishes the preview here. Hopefully that works. So it did actually put the image into the document. Um, you'll notice that it's so large in the document that it overflowed onto a second page. Uh, and so one of the other things you'll probably need to do when you include graphics is to help LaTeX out a little bit to size the graphic appropriately, uh, to, to display correctly in your document. Um, and then also, for the sake of including the image uh, as part of your writing, you'll also want the ability to give it a figure number um, and a label so you can refer to that figure elsewhere in the document, and also to provide a caption um, in any academic uh, type writing. You also want to provide a caption for any image or illustration or graph or anything that you include in your document. So what we're going to do to do that is two things. First of all, in order to control the size of this image, because right now it's so large that it's not even fitting on one page of our LaTeX document, um, I'm going to provide an optional argument to include graphics that tells it how wide I want the graphic to be. So an optional argument goes inside of square brackets, um, and the shape that it takes is you say width equals. Um, and the way that I like to do this is by calling the width uh, a certain percentage of the page width. So let's say I want it to be half as wide as the page. Um, then I can just write 0.5 times backslash page width. Actually, it looks like Overleaf corrects me to mean line width instead of page width. It should have the same effect. Um, and so changing that 
uh, include graphics command to include that uh, modified width, once this thing finishes refreshing the preview, that should have the effect of shrinking the graphics so that it's only as wide, it's only half as wide as the text would have been on the line in which it appears. So that should make it a much more manageable size within the document. There we go. So now it actually shows up on my, on my title page here instead of overflowing onto the second page. Um, and you know, you'll probably need, depending on what your image is, to play around with the width. Um, but when you shrink the width, it also shrinks the height proportionally, so nothing gets distorted. Um, but then let's also look at ways of incorporating this into your document as a figure. To do that, we'll just use the begin figure environment, and end figure, of course, at the end. Just including a begin and end figure command will have the effect, it'll have a very small effect when we first see it, but it will just add beneath the, uh, the picture itself a little figure label, which hopefully when it shows up here will say figure one. The other thing that it does, and this is actually kind of helpful, um, is when you declare a figure inside of a LaTeX document, you're also giving LaTeX the permission to kind of float that figure to wherever it fits best on a page. So it'll fit at the bottom of a page, or it might fit at the top of a page. Um, and it's not going to kind of put it awkwardly somewhere in your text. I think it also has the effect, and we're seeing that happen here, of automatically centering it. Um, before I put the figure environment in here, our, our figure was just over at the left side of the page. Now it's smack in the center, which is where you want your figures to be. And then inside of that environment, we have the opportunity to provide a couple of things. Uh, one of them is a caption, which you should definitely have for any figure that you include in your document, something to explain what it is and to connect it with the writing that surrounds it. So maybe in my backslash caption command, which should be inside of your figure environment, so I put it in between begin and end figure here, um, and I'll write something about this. So in complete sentences, Pascal's triangle is a visualization of the binomial coefficients uh, binomial NK uh, with each row corresponding to a given value of N or something like that, right? So here I have a complete sentence explaining the context of, uh, of what's being shown in the figure. Um, and now that I have that caption in there, it has something to write beneath the figure, and it's automatically numbered my figure as figure one. Um, so of course, letting LaTeX handle all of your numbering for figures is a smart thing. That means if you move figures around in your documents, it'll be automatically renumbered uh, every time the LaTeX file reprocesses. Um, and so now this looks kind of like a complete inclusion of a figure. Um, the only other thing we'd want to do with it is to provide, to give us a handle uh, that will let us refer to this figure elsewhere in the document. So let's say I'm writing some prose in a paragraph, and I want to refer to this figure by its number. So uh, maybe I'll say something like, the arithmetic properties of binomial coefficients include the additivity property, which asserts that binomial nk plus binomial n plus 1k, sorry, nk plus 1, is equal to binomial n plus 1k. This property is evident in figure, and now I want this to say figure 1 right now, but if I were to move this paragraph and move this figure elsewhere in the document, I want this to automatically update to be the right figure number for whatever this figure is. So the way to do that is to create a target, first of all, as a label. So in this figure, I'm going to give it the label, let's say Pascal or something. Um, that means that whenever I refer to this figure elsewhere in my document, Pascal is its name now. And then to make the reference, I'll use the ref command. And again, Overleaf is really friendly about popping up and giving you the names of all of your available targets that you can list, all the available labels you can refer to. So Pascal is one of the options that it pops up for me now that I'm going to use inside of my reference command. This property is evident in figure, and then I have the reference, um, where we can see that each pair of numbers adds up to the number. Each pair of numbers on a row, each pair of adjacent numbers 
on a row adds up to the number beneath them on the next row, or whatever. So when that finishes its processing, we should see a reference to figure one pop up here. And sometimes it takes a couple seconds for it to get its bearings. Um, because LaTeX has to process everything kind of twice, once to figure out what all the numbers should be, and then again, it processes it automatically to update all the references inside of the document. Uh, hmm, hmm. For some reason, it still didn't pop up with the reference. I don't know if it's just being slow or what. Can you think if you find it after you mentioned it? Um, that's a good question. Now, that's why I, th I think that should be okay again because it processes it twice. I think it might just be a, a case of where did I put the label. Uh, I think I might need to put the label after the caption. I remember there's some weird thing about how to create labels for figures. So I screw that up every once in a while. There are other options you can use to the figure environment as well if you want to control. For example, let's say I want this figure at the top of a page instead of in the middle of a page or something. Um, there are also extra options you can use for that. But those I don't think are important right now. Um, yeah, again, it's giving me trouble for how to, how to create this label here. Let's see if there's a better placement for that label that I haven't put in here yet. Oh, there we go. Now it seems to have figured it out. So this is, again, one of the great things about LaTeX is compared to something like Microsoft Word or, or another environment where you can set it up. Yeah, it's back to question marks, but I think it'll figure itself out again in a second. Um, is that it provides all of this automatic sectioning and labeling and table of contents creation and index creation and all this stuff so that you're free to move around all the elements of your document however you need to. Uh, and then anything that's specifically numbered, like you can number equations in the same way using labels and references. Um, you can also number figures using labels and references, although apparently we do need to put this label at the end after the caption is actually where it, it worked the best. Um, but that way, if you move stuff around in your document, you don't have to think about going through and updating all of the references, because LaTeX will take care of that automatically.